Hi, I'm Hayden Blackie and I'm Head of Learning and Teaching at the University of South Wales and I'm here with my co-chair of this year's Alt-C. I'm Malcolm Ryan, uh, formerly at the University of Greenwich but retired as of the 1st of January. So Malcolm, this last year since we've been co-chairs together, how have you seen this gone? Well, I, I've been amazed actually, uh, Hayden. I, I heard lots of people in, in the past say that you know, co-chairing a, a large national conference was, was really hard work. But I have to say that the staff team, the old team, have been absolutely amazing. And I, I think being co-chair has been a bit of a breeze, really. Yeah, I mean, it's been the same for me. In fact, I was talking with colleagues in work about what the demands of being co-chair yeah. were. And I was thinking, actually, I've had a lighter year than I have the last few years when I've been a on the programme committee reviewing papers mm. and for mm. a couple of years was editor of the abstracts yeah. and that was more intense in terms of focused activity. Yeah. The co-chairs have just been, everything going okay folks? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. carry on. Well, uh, apart from those first couple of meetings, you know, where I, th I think we had some in-depth discussions about, about the theme, what was important to us the tone, the things that we wanted to see in the conference. Yeah, and I think once now we've got to the conference, that's been one of the things which have been a real celebration for me, that mm. those things around tone and effect have been so so critical. You know, the, the learner voice, it's all about the yeah. learner, something we were certain had to be representative of us and where, the way we were working, both in our institutions and the sector. And then those other themes which have been emergent yeah. and have become more... A priority like like in the open, like the whole agenda about learning analytics, which I know when I go back to the university after the conference are right at the heart of the things that we're doing this year with our work with the Open Education Resource University and indeed uh, getting a colleague involved in the way that we manage the learning analytics in our own institutional context, yeah. using data that's already there. So... So far, we've been here for a day and a half. How do you think it's going? I think it's been really good. Um, well, I was a little bit nervous yesterday morning. Um, public speaking is something I can do, like falling off a log, as mm. you know. And I really love being with people. Um, so being a conference co-chair, I think, is a pretty kind of natural thing to do. But I still had the little butterflies in the morning, first thing, until I sat next to you, Hayden, on the <laughs> stage. Um, and people did think that was rather amusing, actually sitting on a sofa on the stage together. Yes, um, you were looking out at the audience and me tweeting with the audience. It was I an know. interesting combination, yeah. yeah. But, you know, once you stand up and you, you see the smiling faces and you see the people you know, the friends that you've made over, well, 20 years in my case, because I, I came to the first conference, as, as you know, um, and then seeing all these other expectant faces of the new members, and there's lots of new people Ooh. here actually. Um, Seems is... every year we have you know, a third of people who've been coming for quite a long time, a third of people for whom it's a second or third conference and yeah. about a third who are brand new Absolutely. and it's great to interact with them. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that mix of people who've been before who are well established feel very comfortable, new people not really sure what to expect folk who've come to a few and have come back because it's obviously something at an old conference um, to satisfy them. I think that mix is, is really, really good. Um, there's a nice gender balance, Ooh. I think. You know, given that this is a, a learning technology conference, I, I remember in the past, predominantly male. Right. And I think if you look at it now, it's a very mixed. Yeah, and I think that international nature of the conference too, the yeah. fact that we've got people here from Africa, from Australia, New Zealand, mm from um, Canada and, yeah. and the US, it gives it a much broader it spectrum does. than some of the conferences which are kind of very UK focused. Yes. So I think it's quite nice to have that, that wider range. And when you see the people from you know, across Europe, I think almost every country in, in Western Europe is represented yeah. here in one form or There's another. There's 14 countries, Canada. Yeah, I'm told. exactly. I so know that, that's really it. good. And I, I think, I mean, people, people have reflected this back to me. I think one of the things that I like about um, ALT and the ALT conference is the sense of community. Mm. And I haven't said that to very many people, but I've been surprised how many people have said to me, I really like coming to ALT because I'm made to feel welcome. It feels like a family. It feels like I'm part of a community. Um, and that's really good, I think. Yeah, and you made the point when you, we started yesterday of looking back at the 20th uh, brochure from the first oh, yes. ALT. Yeah. 
conference and, and the words were in there they about were. us gathering as a community to share what we do. Yes. It's not just about who's at the leading edge, who's at the most no. initiative. As Sheila McNeil, one of the invited speakers, said yesterday, it's not just the shiny bright lights that keep us going in learning technology. Yeah. It's actually the return and the deliverables and the way we manage those things, uh, you know, people sharing things in common. Yeah. And it was great, I think, yesterday to start off with the National Union of Students and, yeah. and Rachel Wenstone as our first speaker. Do you think that's been an impact on the conference? Oh, I, I do. I mean, I, I remember the conversations earlier on when we were quite insistent that the student voice <coughs> was, was a real focus. I mean, the other themes are important too, but for me... I think the student voice and the student as change agent and partner is really important. And lots of people have commented on how starting an old conference with the student voice was such a refreshing yeah. thing to do. Um, and several people have, have also commented that at sessions they subsequently went to, presenters were referring back to the things that Rachel had mm -hmm. said. And I saw lots of tweets about people saying, oh, we'd better rethink what we were planning to do with students about X. Yeah. You know, and that's great to have that immediate impact. Do you, do you think it was luck or judgment that got us to this? Because one of the things I'm conscious of is since we decided the learners should be up front at conference this year, the Welsh Government has developed its Students as Partners yeah. policy, NUS Wales have developed a partnership where, yeah. with the institutions around uh, the QAA developments in this area. The same yeah. things have been happening across the UK. Yeah. So w were we lucky or just brilliant, Malcolm? <laughs> no. Would you really need an answer for that? No. <laughs> um, well, well you, you must know of my involvement with Alessing, yes. the evaluation of the learner experience group. Um, and the fact that, that I've been working um, with people like Liz um, in Exeter, mm. who were one of the, the pioneers in students as change agents. Yes, and, and the same I, way that we've been working closely with Luke right. and the team yeah. in Birmingham City. And in the, same area. In, in the most recent um, GISC Developing Digital Literacies oh. um, project that I was a critical friend to, um, all four of the projects I was working with had some engagement with students as change agents and indeed um, the university I left in, in January um, is now spearheading a national mm -hmm. network. So for me, um, the student as change agent is a natural evolution from the student voice that Rona and others wrote about back in, what, 2004, 2005? Yes, I mean, when I was a member of Alessic and that, that the core team back, back in those yeah. days, those, that work has taken many different directions. It's interesting... Uh, for us at the University of South Wales, it's been a big agenda yes. over the last five years, but yeah. now the rest of the world seems to be catching up with us. And interesting too, what you reflected about conversations yesterday, even mm. as I sat uh, yesterday evening just uh, catching up with the end of the day, I could hear conversations mm. in the room mm. uh, about people saying, oh yeah, and we don't quite take that view of students. And even those were starting to say, ah, oh, let's take a critical approach yeah. to students. Because, you know, Richard was making the point of why representation is so important. Yes. But sometimes, as students' union officers change, sometimes on an annual basis, yeah. representation can be rep uh, re repetition and making sure there's good handover and you don't reinvent the wheel every one to two years becomes important. Yeah. Yeah. It? But it can also be tokenistic, I think. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm not decrying the fact that lots of institutions have very good student representation on, on committees, on programme committees and so on. But, you know, when you compare that with some of the amazing work going on and, and things that students are leading on. Yeah, that's the important. But getting students as leaders, you know, the whole academic manifesto agenda, yeah. our institution this year is driving its learning and teaching enhancement strategy around the document that's emerged yeah. from the students' union, rather than us telling the students what we think they should be enhancing, they become the owners of the way forward. And I think they have. Yeah. more institutions taking that approach will help. Yeah. So, uh, as we come to the end of this session, are there yeah. anything you'd like to reflect on specifically so that we can share with a wider world and our um, live audience? No, I, I just think it, it's, it's, so far it's been a really good conference. I, I think, you know, um, we are celebrating 20 years of the ALT conference. Um, the fact that ALT continues to exist, I, I think, is in itself amazing. It's, it's evolved. Um, 
The people here are a very different set of people to 20 years ago. Um, I'm just looking forward to the next day and a half really. Tonight's celebrations I think are going to be really the icing on the cake. Um, and then, you know, tomorrow we have another great half a day and a bit um, with, you know, a, a, an amazing keynote, I, I yeah. expect, from, from Stephen Downs and some more super sessions, especially the past presidents, um, you know, giving their, their views. So I'm really looking forward to it. And, and actually, I should be sorry when yeah. tomorrow finishes because I, I will no longer be co-chair and I've enjoyed that role enormously. Yeah. For those of you who have not been able to join us in person, do come to a future Alt-C, because there really are opportunities to meet old friends, yeah. to catch up with where things are going in learning technology, and to gain stuff that goes back into the way we do business, be it in HEFE, adult community learning, or schools yes. across the learning technology sector. And there's always the, the new old conferencing platform, which I think has been really amazing this year so if you haven't been at the conference physically you've um, got the opportunity to catch up on some of the sessions anyway on the alt conferencing platform so i think from from hayden and myself you know bye bye folks <laughs>